So tonight is the meeting of the Weathersfield Parks and Recreation Advisory Board and Harbor Management Commission for Thursday, September 23rd, 2021. This is a virtual meeting in accordance with governor's executive order and pursuant to current state orders related to public meetings. This meeting is being recorded and will later be made available on the town's website for viewing. All set, Dan. All right, very good. So uh, welcome everybody. Um, I understand we have some public comments tonight or uh, um, someone wants to speak before. So I, I forget your name already, I'm awful, sorry. Natalie Real. Natalie, thank you, Natalie. Um, so um, you can go ahead and we can talk a little bit after you make your comments. Okay, um, is that okay, Kathy? Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, um, you can give your, uh, your comments about the DAC. Okay, thank you for having me. Um, my fiance and I bought our house at 310 Hartford Ave almost two years ago in November. And last summer we purchased a pontoon boat and we have it moored in the cove um, and we're finding it rather challenging to get through the wetlands into a canoe and then over to the boat. So we've been um, working on trying to figure out how to get a dock and it's a quite long process. And, um, you know, originally we had started with the town and then the state and um, most recently been working with George Logan, who's our surveyor. Um, and he's been sort of walking me through the process a little bit and he helped us generate some of the maps and um, we opted to go with the very similar dock that the town has put over at the boat launch, the floating docks that are not permanent. And um, just thinking that, you know, that really all we need is to have it far enough out to get through the tall grasses and to be able to get to the pontoon. So, um, we worked with the same vendor that did the town's dock, that easy dock floating, plastic floating system. And um, they're out of New Hampshire. And so they gave us the layout and we worked with George and um, Derek through the town to get maps and the layout of the dock. Through the assessment process, they determined that if you look at the map at the very end of the long red rectangle, the ground is much firmer on the right side where it extends further out into the cove, there's a tree growing there. And so they were recommending that we put it there and, um, and that we would, you know, just make sure that we mowed all the way down to the beginning of the dock. Um, but you'll notice in the drawing, it, it's got the same sort of um, metal mesh that would allow sunlight and grass to continue to grow. Um, and so we're trying really hard to fit it within the general permit requirements from the town and the state. So um, recently I was told this week that the first place to go to would be the Harbor Master Commission and get you know, some comments and questions and some advice. So uh, Kathy helped me pull it together last minute. So thank you. Okay. And before... I just admitted someone and I just like them to introduce themselves. Uh, phone number. This is Mary Frazier. Oh, okay. Glad you can make it, Mary. I am too, thanks. Thanks, Mary. Welcome. Yep. All right, so um, just looking at at this, the only question I have right now is uh, in the harbor management plan on page seven. Did you guys review that about structures? And um, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't. Say I didn't again, get Dan. The harbor management plan on page seven under structures. All right, is uh, to Kathy. I think the only question we would have is. You know, is this drawing um, in compliance with the structures as set forth in the harbor management plan? Uh, 
as, as far as I know right now, it looks like it's it 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 fits within the plan. Okay. Does look oh. like it does fit. Yeah. Oh. So who would I uh, just curious who would just double check it, you know? Sure. And I think we're gonna well, it's up to the board certainly, but I think we could probably just go ahead. But I just want to make sure that they're in compliance and they know um, that they have to be in compliance with that. If, if, uh, otherwise, it's, you know, if they're not in compliance with that, it's enough. But I think they are in compliance with it. And part of that gets looked at by DEEP also, the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Mm -hmm. a and depending, I don't think they're going out far enough, but the DEEP might send it to the Army Corps too if they thought there was a question. Okay. So there's it. We're we're the advisory board, so we these are the questions to bring up, and I can make sure those get looked at. Um, and yours is basically, does it fit in the plan or not? Yes, on um, under the under structures on page seven. Natalie, do you have that? Do you have the plan? Yes, Kathy emailed it to me, so okay. I would have to go look at it. Okay, so but just, I do um, have it. Certainly, that's something that you should give to whoever is, is helping you with this. Uh, and there's uh, anybody else see anything else? Dan, I just had a couple of quick questions. Okay. Um, looking at the the uh, the dot diagram, uh, the total footage on that, and I know it's obviously not the scale, but I, it adds up to like 40 feet roughly of including the the ramps, the hinge kit, and all the way to the dot, the uh, end of the dock. If I did my math correctly, the Another drawing that's labeled figure A, um, that's the one that's got the little skew there in the red. That looks like that reference is 53 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, it says proposed dock 53 feet. And I know that's not, I mean, I, I guess I'm not including the ramp as the dock. I guess I'm looking at the dock itself to me as what's in the water. So I was mm -hmm. a little confused. I know it's only 13 feet, but you know, the, just, the, just the layout of, you know what the dock versus the um, the ramp because I know they're separate. They they indicate them differently. They got the gangway, the the stationary stuff. So the, I was a little confused by the by the drawings as far as the the footage out there. And and I had the same comment as Dan on that uh, structure section because it's pretty specific as to you know not interfering with the uh, fairway etc. Which I'm sure I don't I, the channel doesn't go over. I, mean, I don't think there's going to be inter any interference at all. But just to certainly make sure and. Kathy, is this, um, do you recall the last time this board probably reviewed any plans for docks? Yeah, I actually went back and looked. Um, the, the, you can't count the Yacht Club because that was a totally different project. But the last time we had a homeowner in was in um, uh, uh, Hartford, it was 326 Hartford Avenue. Uh, that was when they had a dock and a mooring and they worked with the harbor manager, harbor, harbor master with some of the anchoring. And that was in 2013. So that didn't really need to go anyplace else. It was just a matter of making sure the dock wasn't gonna break away. And then in January of 2000, 2014, the same uh, homeowner put in a new dock that went through the whole process in Lynn Wetlands Deep Harbor Management Commission. So that was in 2014. Okay. No, I think your, your point as well um, for the uh, grass growing through in the wetlands, I, I appreciate the uh, concern for that. That's a good, that's a good point. Right. So Kathy, do we need to make the, um, the recommend, I, recommendation to go forward or? Yeah, you could make a recommendation to move forward with us checking um, the structure section. Yeah. All right. And, so, uh, and I don't know, Mike, did you have a concern about the length of the dock or anything or all? No, no, no. I was just questioning which one was because they conflicted with each other. And I know it's there, these are preliminary drawings. I get it. Would we, would our, um, the Harbor Management Commission see this as it continues through the process or this is our only look at it as it goes through so we know what's going on when it finally gets finished? Um, we could certainly ask that when it, it gets it gets all approved just to get a final copy. I, yeah. I think that would be a good idea. I don't, I don't know how the rest of the members feel. No, I think that's a good idea. 
I, I, I'd make a motion to accept the preliminary plans for allowing the dock as presented um, at th for Three Town Harford Avenue. Um, okay, so, so do we want to add as, as uh, you know, as long as it's in compliance with whatever section that is, what section is that? Section. Uh, that's, um, yeah, it's, it's under, I'll, I'll reference the yeah. right section yeah, for structures. Reference, yeah, under structures, as long as it's in, um, deemed to be in compliance with that. Well, do we want to just broaden and say in compliance with Harbor Management Plan, or is that something yeah. we're supposed to make sure that we know anyway? Yeah, yeah we're supposed to make sure. <laughs> Yeah. And 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 it's difficult because you're seeing the plans for the first time. And I should explain that the reason we're doing it this way is we're trying to work with the resident because our October meeting will be after the inland wetlands meeting. So mm -hmm. we're just trying to keep her on a track here. Yeah. But I can check this out before the inland wetlands meeting and just make sure that uh, it does meet the, that it does do the, um, meets the plan. Okay. And, and I'm, I missed the structure section. I went and saw the other section and thought we were good. So I appreciate that, Dan. Okay. So, um, Mike has a motion. Do I have a second? Anybody seconding? I just had a quick question as I was stalking Google Maps. Um, is the only other, just curious, is the only other um, resident who has a dock on Hartford, so 326? It looks like that. That's the only one that's come to the commission. I don't know. There could have been others right. before the commission was established mm -hmm. that are out there that we may not be yeah, aware that's of. That's all I see. Yeah, and satellite, but. I was just curious, but I'll approve the motion as second day of approval as well. <laughs> okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed? Any abstentions? No. Um, Colleen is going to abstain because I'm on the phone and can't see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, Natalie, you're all set with us as long as, uh, you know, Kathy's going to do a little investigation to make sure that everything is in compliance. It probably is. Um, but if it's not, if it's not in compliance for some reason, we have to go back to the drawing board. It looks like it's, uh, it should be fine. So. Okay. Makes all sense. Right. Okay. All right. Thank Fair. you. Yep. And and I'll then, be yeah. in touch, Natalie. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Kathy. And yep. we'll get back okay. to you and I'll try and resolve that within the next couple of days. That sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Natalie. Bye. 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 Okay. Um, any other public comments? I think we're good, right, Kathy? I don't believe anybody else is on that has to be admitted. Okay. Next course of business is the minutes. Uh, any changes or revisions? I would move to approve. <laughs> Any seconds? I'll second it. This is Mary Frazier. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any? All right. That's it. Unanimous. Okay. Very good. Monthly report for July and August. Let me take a look here. <clears throat> Let's see here. Um, Kathy, was there any damage to Mill Woods from that big storm? Uh, um, the beach, the beach washed out a little bit. But yeah. the swimming season was over, so we didn't care. All right. But it's not like that other storm wiped out the... No, no. The it held up much, much better. Good. Let's see here. 
anything else? Tom's not here to talk about men's softball, so let's see. I think that's it. Fall registration's going all right. Yes. Um, yep, we're we're are out there now. People have signed up for our programs and some of them have started. We're not quite all the way back, but we are offering a lot of our regular programs. Okay. And it looks like the craft fair is going to be October 2nd, which would be next Saturday. Yep. Uh, what else we got going here? Let me look. The, car the carnival is still on the same too, right? The carnival is on. It's on. Really? It is on without the beer garden. Oh, well, <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> they felt you would be too close together. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right, but that's great that it's on. All right. Uh, very good. Anything else? Anybody have any other comments? No. Okay. Um, Kathy, letters and announcements. Um, I did send out in your packet the revised list of members. And um, um, those of you that had expired, you did get reappointed. So that just shows all the new dates for everybody that uh, needed to, that um, did get reappointed. Okay. Other than that, if if I miss something or something's incorrect, just shoot me an email and I can update the list. Okay. And we've got a new flagpole at the community center, it looks like. Yeah, I wanted to let you know about that because it was it worked out really well. Um, when we we did uh, uh, some some exterior changes on the main entry where the green canopy is. And um, we took away the existing flagpole was right on the side of the canopy in a little brick walled area that was um, starting to deteriorate. So maintenance suggested taking it all out and moving the flagpole. So we thought that was a good idea. And then when we began to think about where to put it, to give physical services credit, they suggested moving it over to and putting it behind the brick wall of the that that has the signage for the 9/11 Memorial Sports Center, and that was completed on September 10th, and the flag went up on September 10th, and it looked really nice. So I just want to draw your attention to it when you go into the building. Um, the shifting of it, you actually really see the flag now and right behind, it's right behind that little mini brick wall, but on the side of the, uh, the steel from the World Trade Towers. So you get a really nice picture as you drive into the parking lot. So it just worked out really well and it looks so good. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Very good. Um, did you want to talk about the event this Saturday? Sure. I, I actually added a number three under letters and announcements. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to let you know that the Weathersfield Education Foundation is doing a, a harvest fair up on the property in front of the barn at the Keisha farm. Uh, back over the summer, we went through all the approvals and everything. And um, they got, uh, and what they're doing is they're doing it for elementary school children and their families. And they've invited all the PTOs, the library, um, police, fire, just to kind of celebrate the farming heritage in Weathersfield. And this is a first time event that they're doing just to, um, just to explore farming in town. Um, they've asked the onion character to show up that's always in the parade and everything. And so we went through everything, we were all set. And then um, through just a, a miscommunication, we had talked to them about insurance for the event last minute and um, it became complicated. So the end result, I talked to Dan and a lot of times Parks and Rec will co-sponsor events with groups 
because it's a good event for the town. It works well. And so we went ahead and just for this one time, we're gonna work with them and co-sponsor this event to cover the insurance. So we just wanted to make a point of letting the board know. And usually we talk about these things when we do them. So I just wanted to make you aware that we, I anticipate it'll be a cute event up there. It's only nine to 12. And um, it's right in front of the barn, which is right adjacent to the high crest baseball field, soccer field. And fortunate for us, they just paved the road. So it's kind of cool that they got the road paved in time. We got lucky, their weather didn't stop it. So that's what's happening with the Harvest Fair and the foundation has really done a lot. And there's, there's no charge. People are just gonna go up and enjoy the different PTO booths and the tables that they have. And there's, um, there's gonna be hands-on things for the kids to do. Is there a rain date for that, Kath? No, yeah, I know we're watching the weather, but yeah. <laughs> And, they, and how many they chose people, not to. How many people, I know they've never done it before, but what do they expect for attendance? Oh, that's really tough. We thought if the PTOs are involved, they might get people to come, you know, because they're involved in it. I don't know, maybe a hundred for a first time. Really hard to guess. There's also some of the soccer games are going on. So we hope they walk over because there's a path that you can walk right over. So um, that one was really, I'm, I was thinking a hundred would be good for a first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I might take a, if I get some time, I might stop by just to see how everything is. Um, that's letters and announcements. Any old business, Kathy? I didn't have anything right now, unless anybody else, I, nothing came to mind that we needed to go over. Nope, anyone? No, nope. it's probably not old business, but um, somewhere um, just curious, the Cove renovation project, if you will, for lack of a better term, I don't know if anything's any progress has been made on any of those improvements that we've talked about a number Are of times. Are you referring to our, um, our parking where we're going to extend the island? Right. Yeah, um, right. We're, we're still working out the plan and the details with engineering and physical services. So we're at that stage now where we have almost a final plan that uh, the town engineer could really uh, make formal so that we could begin to go to the different boards and commissions. So we're really close to that. And we've been working on um, the size of the island as, extent, as it extends from the island as you come in, that's gonna be narrowed a bit and, and it's gonna carry that out a certain distance and we're looking, we're talking with our um, tree warden. I, I, this is an interesting story. We were all trying to figure out, we wanted to put some plantings there, not sure what to put on it. Wanted to be careful about people driving over it. And so I, I went to the tree warden. I said, I don't know that we really want a tree, but if we wanted a tree, what would work that flood? Because the area floods all the time. And he told me a simple answer, which I had surprised that you don't even think of it. He says, well, what you do, Kath, is you look and see what's there now that gets flooded and how it's growing. So, um, so he's looking into that for us to see. We don't want the trees too tall because we're gonna bring electricity out to the attendance shed. But those are kind of the details we're working on. Okay. Would, we have, would we have an opportunity to look at that again? Oh yeah, before we go anywhere, it'll come back to the board because you only saw a preliminary plan. Right, right. <clears throat> okay, very good. Um, any other, uh, well, uh, we can talk about this now. Any other issues with the boat ramp? Any other complaints or? No, because we had so much water, the, what I'll refer to as the new boat ramp, mm -hmm. that they were able to launch a lot more than the, the one everybody, the one to the, the old one. Mm -hmm. So I did not hear anything. Nothing came to my attention. Let me put it that way. Very good. Because they had a lot of people using the river this year. So that's good to hear. Um, let's see here. New business. Um, banquet room, the air conditioning. Uh, 
wanted to let the board know that we've started a process. We've hired an engineering firm to look at the air conditioning unit that's above the banquet room. It was installed in um, the 1996-97 year. And we are constantly having problems with it every year. And <clears throat> probably for it's, they're saying it's good for 20 years, 15 to 20 years. So we're maxing out on that. And so um, we've hired a firm to design a replacement and in the, they're in the process of doing that now so that we could get a better idea of a cost estimate to, um, to what it's gonna cost to replace it. Cause we're just using a placeholder right now in the capital improvement budget when we make that request. So the engineers are out there looking at it now and they're, they're um, beginning the, to do the design. And we explained to them how we have the <clears throat> partition in the middle. Therefore, we have an activity on one side and an activity on the other. And one side could be fitness and the other side could be a meeting. And the fitness people are always hot and the <laughs> meeting people are cold. You know, you can't get that right temperature. So one of their suggestions was instead of going with one big unit, to look at two separate units. So those are the kinds of things with the new technology they're looking at. So I wanted the board to know that we've started that process to look at it to, for the end result of getting a good cost estimate of what it might be. And then to see what it's gonna cost for money. And because the building is the emergency shelter and um, it is the community center, I'm gonna look into whether or not any of the federal rescue funds would help with the ventilation of the building of that, that particular room. So I don't know that there'll be funds there, but it's certainly an avenue to look at. Sure. So you said they originally installed it in 1997? Yeah. It's well, a 15 to 20 year and we're, we've got about 25 years out of it, which is right. Yeah, and, okay. and it's, it's, it's just, um, it's, it's, it's old and it's working yeah. really hard. And unfortunately, every time I have a big event, <clears throat> of course it knows we're having a big event and it shuts <laughs> off. So we yeah. have to get maintenance out there to, to make it work again. So it, it's time because you get nervous when you start booking weddings. Yeah. And even town functions. Mm -hmm. So, so Kathy, would that be the expectation to get the numbers and in, in preparation for the upcoming budget? Is that the because there's no money right now in any capital for the air conditioning? Correct. That's correct. Yeah, we're trying to get a good number. Okay. And and does that does that facility or building does that have an auxiliary generator there if it is a shelter? Yes. It does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. both both the community center and the high school. Um, is also uh, an emergency shelter should we need bigger than the community center. And the high school has a generator. Okay. Very good. Um, fall program update, anything? Well, you asked me earlier, yep. um, unless people have specific questions. Okay. How, how is it? Are people registering? They're getting back in the groove of things? Yeah, people are yeah. registering. Um, Classes are filling or have filled. Um, trying to think. Um, yep, we're, do, we're doing our therapeutic recreation program after school. We've got the keen after school programs in the middle school and the elementary school. We're working on them for the middle school. We ran into a snag there and we're trying to, we're working through that with some staffing uh, issues. And um, let's see. The outdoor programs are going, all the youth sports, th that'll kind of lead into the next one. Okay. <laughs> Athletic um, field use. Um, <clears throat> I think every youth sport we have in town is playing in the fall this year. So just to let you know that mm -hmm. we have no fields left. Okay. Um, they all chose to do something, whether it's clinics, oh. games. So the ones that so Little League has both boys and girls, boys of baseball, girls softball. Um, lacrosse is doing some clinics and workshops. 
So some of the things that are normally just the uh, spring have mm -hmm. actually kind of come into the fall too. And I, I think it's really just, you know, trying to keep the kids active and busy and having something to do after trying to keep them outdoors as much as we can. Are there any, um, any complaints about not being able to get a field or? Um, softball wanted, softball, girls softball asked for Millwood softball field number five, mm -hmm. but that's part of soccer. Yeah. We have two soccer fields up there that are for, uh, that are full size mm -hmm. that the high school and the soccer club use in their fall sports. So that was probably one thing that came up. Okay. I haven't heard about it recently. They have Greenfield. And um, I'm pretty sure they're, they're using that. So that that came up, but we have to put soccer up there for the high school because yeah. they have they have six teams at the high school: boys and girls, freshmen, JV, and varsity. So to put all the they don't have enough fields for all those games. Okay, um, you know how on the Millwood's master plan we still have that uh, soccer field, you know. On yeah. the plan, anyway. Um, have we talked anything about that? I mean, it's, I mean, it sounds like we're struggling for fields. So, uh, has there been any talk at all about at least putting a field up there for for the high school to practice on or anything? Not, not building a full. There hasn't been any talk recently on building that full size soccer field up there. Okay. So that that hasn't happened. Um, I think, I think if we get, if we're allowed to do something with fields in the future, I think we have to evaluate, um, what would make the best sense for what type of field to build because of all the different, because lacrosse and field hockey came late to the game. Mm -hmm. So to look at it, to look at it as a bigger picture, instead of just saying, a soccer field. Mm -hmm. I think we have to kind of look at it more globally with what's going on. Like if you were to ask me, I would say if we had the opportunity to build another synthetic turf field and put all the lines on it, like the high school, that yeah. that would that would cover soccer, football, lacrosse, field hockey. Yeah, I make it. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. And and then we would work with the groups to share that field. And then the high school would have Catone and, you know, it could, and we'd have all the outlying fields. And of course the high school after school would come to Catone, uh, would come if we built a new synthetic field. That's okay. just a dream. That's just a, an idea. And there's so, no, uh, so any complaints about Fuller, how's that doing from the neighbors? And not, no, not yet that I've heard. Okay. Very good. The only thing is the uh, portalette didn't get clean. So we love portalettes. They drive us nuts. Mm -hmm. Kathy, was there, there's not a portalette at Highcrest. Did that get it. removed? No, there, there, it's, it's behind the backstop towards the school on the, on the, it, it, by the tree line. Yeah. Where it normally is. Yeah. I didn't it's see it. There. I could have missed it. I don't know. Oh, I didn't see I'll, it. I'll have it checked. I mean, because uh, it came, we didn't, we didn't take it away. It was there all summer. I mean, it could have disappeared into the forest right there. I don't know, but. Or the kids could have knocked it over and you don't see it. Yeah. Um, I'll check it. I'll, I'll, have I'll be there tomorrow. Saturday and can look, but yeah. Yeah, I'll check it tomorrow because if it is, it should be, it should be there. Okay. But I'll, I'll, that's too bad. I was just out there, but I didn't look, I don't usually look at the portal and I was at the Keisha barn checking out everything. Now, how is the, um, how is the uh, conditions on the fields? Are we getting any complaints about bad field conditions or anything? No, no. Once or twice with some of those really heavy rains, we closed fields, mm -hmm. uh, but but I think they were able to play the next day, if I if I remember correctly. Two um, days later, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think that um, 
I I haven't really heard anything. Usually it would get it get to me if there's really an issue. Mm -hmm. But um, the fall has been certainly drier. Yeah. Later. Well, that's you know we get a lot of rain this year, so the grass was growing like crazy. That everything looks green. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. So that's good news. Um, I mean, there is an there is an issue with um, Little League not being able to use the lights at Lighted. Um, don't we still have a park ranger at the um, at Mill Woods? We do, but Little League is asking it for practice. Yeah, and well, it, it gets dark at like six forty five. So. I know, but we're we've put them on for all the games. But putting them on for practice, no other youth group has that. And if we started doing that, then everybody would want to be on that field to practice because it has the lights. And that would just. Yeah, I mean, it's also darker over there earlier because it's so shaded. Um, then, it, then it's darker at, mil at lighted than it is at classic. I understand what you're saying. Just how many, and, it, and it's just like, I mean, the kids get home from some of these kids get home from school at like 345, like you're running out of daylight. Like what if what's the what's the is it just because we if we do it for one team, we'll have to do it for everybody else? Or why are why if there's a park ranger there, can't they just turn the lights on for 45 minutes so they can finish their practice? Well, it's that and the budget for the electricity. We, we never budgeted for, we didn't really budget any money for fall use for, for lighted and we're letting them play all the games. We just, uh, uh, th that, so those are the two reasons. Yeah, I mean, all the games are during the day. Those, those aren't being played at night at all. So there's no electricity there, but so it's just budget for electricity. Yeah, and I, and I would, I, I am concerned about, um, who would want to then then use the lighted fields for practice for for other groups? So the like, so it's like two, other it's like baseball or like other sport groups. Well, other sports would want to go on the outfield, and they've they've tried to do that over at Mill at at softball field number one too. We even had teams that played outside the fence of lighted. Uh, Millwoods won on the other side because there was a little bit of light, but not enough. So we stopped that. So that's what it is. I mean, if the board wants to consider that, then I have to budget for that for the future. Can we, um, Kathy, can we, um, can you figure out like a cost for it? And then maybe um, these, you know, different leagues. Just be a little legal pay for it. Yeah, want to pay for it. That way there's no cost to the town. Can you just figure out something like that? We certainly could look at that. Yeah, look at that, and let's give us give the board an idea that way. Um, I, and I, I'll, I'll also go back to you know, lighted was supposed to be for games and not for practices. Mm -hmm. So if they if they practice on it every night in the fall, and then expect it to look good in the spring, so there's a lot of use going on on that field. No, but what I would, I, I mean, I think get a, get a cost, and then we could set limits on it so that it's not being overused. Okay. So, um, you know, certainly one night a week or two nights a week, um, you know, because I know, uh, I think I said this before, when I was a kid, they used to have the soccer field on Millwoods 1. They didn't have uh, fall softball. Yep. So the soccer teams, they were younger teams, but we all played there at night because uh, they didn't have enough fields. So we'd play a couple games there at night, um, you know, and I would go to 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, but that was it. And you played games. Played games. You had soccer permanent posts, not the, you know, back then you had them, they were actually stuck in the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there was no softball on it at all. It was just uh, soccer. And But I was, it was 40 years ago, you know, actually close to 50 years ago, but uh, that's what they did. So, but once again, let me say the fields were not used as much then as they are now. They're not constant constant use you didn't have that but let's take a look and then if it's you know revenue neutral um and it's no cost to the town we can talk about it 
Well, then we'd have to talk about a policy because yeah. they're going to want to practice every night. Yeah, well, like I said, we have to consider the conditions of the field and everything too. So uh, let's let's get a cost estimate first and okay. then um, we can talk a little bit more about it. Colleen, does that sound good? Yeah, I mean, it, it, whatever sort of consideration would be made. I mean, it's, you know, if they practice one night a week, um, but there are other teams that are practicing on other fields. Their games are on the weekends. So it's, it's not getting a lot of use. It's certainly not every night. But if you were willing to, maybe the other teams would want to practice there. And you're right, that could, that could add more use to the field. And, you know, it's great that they're having fall baseball, um, but it's, it's dark at 645, um, you know, so it's, you're just kind of running up against, um, you know, daylight at that point. So, you know, it just seems kind of crazy to me, like to not be able to turn it on one night a week for 45 minutes or half hour so that these kids could practice till 7 PM. I mean, it's not a huge huge ask um but i guess i didn't factor i didn't think that it would be especially costly to um to do it you know or and i didn't really consider it the um the field usage that's definitely something to consider too if the other little league fall teams would want to be using it too because then they could practice later but you know i you also hate to hear like oh you know little league you know, has this field, they, I, I think they paid for the lights, didn't they pay for the lights? That is correct. But now they like can't use them because someone said somewhere at one point that it's only for games and not for practices. So yeah, I mean, it just kind of feels like it, it doesn't sit quite right. Um, but maybe it's just because there's a lot more to consider than just flipping on the lights, you know? Yeah. So let's, I mean, let's look into it. It's not going to harm anything by us looking into it a little bit more. All right. Yeah, uh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yep. And it's, you know, baseball's almost over, so it wouldn't really affect anything this year anyway. It would be next year. Um, let's see. Uh, Solomon Wells House. How's that going, Kathy? That's, that's going well. We've you started slowly with bookings and um, we're because it's so small, we still have to be a little careful with COVID, but if people use the porch, they're good with that. Mm -hmm. And um, we realized that one of the set of railings on the porch was, um, was deteriorating. So our physical services staff were able to replace the, that entire um, span of railing and um, you don't even notice it that it was all redone and resecured, and because they were rotting out and things, and they replaced the whole section. It looks great, and we're going to look to do more of those sections. So, um, so we're doing some work on the exterior of the house. Very good. You said it's um, they pretty much replicated everything that's there without any changes. Y yeah. If I didn't tell you, you probably wouldn't notice it. Okay. You'd say, oh, we didn't paint it as well or something, but but it's a good solid because we were getting nervous that somebody leaned against it, it would give way and fall off the porch. Yeah, that's, yeah it's a safety issue. All right, that's good to hear. Um, Keisha, Keisha Farm Committee. So this is what's happening um, right now. Tyler, you might be excited about this. Um, it looks like tentatively there's going to be a um, presentation to the town council sometime in December. The um, one thing that's left is we're trying to collect a little bit more data um, from the community because uh, because of COVID we've had trouble collecting data from people saying what they really want. So we've got some. There's going to be a survey coming out. Um, I haven't gotten the. I don't think the final thing yet, although I haven't checked my email. So we're trying to get a little bit more community input because we don't want anybody to say, you know, people didn't have a chance to give us their input. And at that point, um, you know, the report will be finalized. 
they might be some uh, mock-ups as to what we're, what the property can look like. Um, and then it'll probably be like two, three, four options given to the town council to review. And, uh, you know, if they want to accept one of those, that would be great. But uh, that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to give multiple options and it's going to be up to the town council to say we like this one or we don't like that one. Or um, The other thing is we are concentrating on things that may be... Um, revenue producing so that hopefully to a certain extent it would be revenue neutral and it would pay for a lot of things itself so that there aren't uh, money concerns uh, we'll see what happens with that and so everything is moving along it looks good well real quick not that i'm not super excited for a presentation of on the plans to town council but I'm wondering if December is not the best time for that, given the election and then a potential changing of council members and how if they get a huge presentation in December and things are changing in January, how that, um, I don't know if that impacts it at all. Well, one of the problems that we're having is uh, the, the people that are doing this for us are University of Hartford students. Right. So the whole summer was wiped out because um, they're doing it for nothing. It's a like a project they're doing. So they the end of the semester. have, yes. So there's finals um, and then they're, they're on break. And then, so um, even if they give a presentation, they certainly can come back in January and go through it again. It's not anything that has to be decided on right away. Okay. And actually it's probably something that if they give a presentation, the counselor should talk about and really decide what they want. I don't think it's something that should be made spur of the moment anyway. So, but uh, I will relay that to the committee that uh, that's certainly a good point that there's- a I mean, obviously it's, it'll yeah. be recorded and the yeah, new council it, can watch it and all of that, but- Well, yeah. can I uh, just quickly hop in? If I remember correctly from two years ago, we actually get sworn in about a week after the election. So we don't wait until January to get sworn in. You're, you're oh, pretty okay. much okay. So it should be the uh, the new council in December. Oh, thank you for that. That's helpful. Yeah. Dan, one of the one of the I'll call it a criticism. I I guess I've had for this for quite some time is that I think there's hasn't been a very good job of getting information to the public. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about that earlier. I know Kathy said that they were struggling with IT folks, et cetera. But yeah. um, this is a big deal, and and I I would certainly urge whatever methods are used because a lot of money was spent and nobody wants to see it just sit and now we're coming to kind of the end and i think it's important to get the input that's expected and i think that's one of the reasons i think you might they might have lacked on getting public input because i think it was a very poor job of getting information or letting people know how to get information back and forth and i know this was discussed really early on with yeah. the chairman of the group and stuff so i don't know what's changed in that but i would certainly urge between now and then to make sure some of that gets out there because it is it's a big deal and you don't want to be criticized later on saying nobody knew about it because we didn't communicate it properly i think that's that's really important no you're, you're right so um you know one of the things we had asked previously is a link on the town website but um yeah. they were so shorthanded uh in the it department that was an, an option for us so at that point um I think it was a Facebook page, a few other things that they did. Um, the University of Harvard students did it. So um, they did it on their own. And that's difficult, because especially, uh, I don't want to date anybody here, but elderly people aren't necessarily on Facebook. Right. I'm not on Facebook. Um, and there's other uh, ways that we had originally uh, wanted to collect the data, which was they have meetings and they have people come and talk to us directly. And, what we've been able to do is just have two or three listening sessions through Zoom, I think it is, which the first one was pretty well attended, second one and the third one, not, not too good. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully that this uh, survey, when it comes out, we can get the word out for people to, you know, go to the survey and, and fill it out and complete it. But it's been very difficult to collect information Due to, due to COVID, it's been very difficult in the situation with the town. So one of the reasons things have been dragged out so long is because a lot of us on the board feel we have not gotten enough input from the town 
and we did not want either the committee to be put in a bad situation saying we didn't do that and we did not want the town council to be put in a bad situation where they're saying they didn't get input from the town um, so you're right with that and when this comes out what we'll do is uh I've certainly let everybody in the board know and then we'll try to figure out how else uh, we can get the word out so we talked about having something in a rare reminder um you know something in the newspaper or something where uh uh, would notify people to go, you know, if you're interested in this, complete it. And I think we only get about 150 responses. You is, know, is, is there, is there still no link on the website for this? No. Is there, no. is there, is there still a reason there can't be? Because if, if the University of Hartford folks did Facebook, if yeah. you're shorthanded, can they do it? Um, I don't think they can do the town website. We've been asking Gary and I know, uh, I think he's been trying to sh struggle along with it, but I don't think we got too far. So I don't know if Kathy can do, wave a magic wand and maybe get a link on the website for us. Or, no, it's, it, it's, it seems I mean, quite it's frankly- it's like a 30 it keeps, second it, thing, it, that's it crazy. Keeps, it, quite frankly, it's a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, it, I, it <laughs> is, absolutely. I either hire somebody to do the link, I, I just, this to me is such an important project that we're talking about because we can't get a link on a website to let people know about it. Yeah. Is really? there information to put on the website? Um, I think um, when the, um, I think it's gonna be Survey Monkey. When we get, when we get the, um, there's a link, there's a Keisha Farms page. So certainly we wanted the link to the Keisha Farms page there. But when the Survey Monkey comes out, we want a link uh, as well from, from the, uh, Town website. Anything that can get us more input would be greatly appreciated. So um, we're just about finished with the survey. As soon as the survey is done, uh, I think in early October it's going to be up. The way it looks like, we'll get input for a month, and then uh, the report will be finished in the next month or so after that. Finally, I thought this was going to be a one-year project. It turned into a two-year project. So, but it's been. Uh, like I said, difficult to get information. It's been very difficult. So anyway, that's the latest. I will keep you guys updated. And if I, if I know anything else, what I'll do is I'll send it to Kathy and have her forward it to sure. everybody. Okay. And to you, Tyler, as well. Um, so that- be Before you get to park board, com board member comments mm -hmm. or- um, I just, I'd forgotten to update you on the Grants Way Foundation. Oh. So I apologize, because um, I just heard from them recently. I've been working with them on the Millwoods uh, footbridge project. And we've been developing information because if you remember the last time they were at the board, they wanted to put together information uh, to get to the town manager and, and then to the town council to talk to them about naming softball field number two in memory of Grant Stanton, yep. and then continuing on with raising funds for the footbridge. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're close to putting together that information. And Tom Mull from Men's Softball, one of our board members, they wrote, Men's Soft, they wrote a letter of support for naming the field and for um, doing the footbridge project. And so we'll be getting and putting all that together. And the foundation actually has their golf tournament this weekend. Oh, so great. they need to get past the weekend to get that all taken care of. And then we're gonna look to put everything together and go to the manager with it. And then at some time in the near future, go to the one of the council meetings. Okay. So they... I just wanted you to be aware that, that we're still moving forward with that. Oh, um... Did they give you a report on the latest uh, financials, how much they have? They wanted to wait till after the golf tournament. Okay. All right, very good. Um, so one other thing, now that you brought that up, Little League came to us before COVID about renaming a field after I think one of the Costello boys that passed away. Whatever happened with that, it was Dan uh, Tenney that came to us. And it um, was... It went up to the manager's office and there was discussion, but it didn't move forward because the last I heard they were waiting for additional information. Okay. And I don't know that they got it. 
Okay, I know this ha that happened right before COVID started, so it was, uh, it was a good year and a half ago, and we haven't heard anything. Okay, so it, I mean, that's, I think we gave them the approval to go ahead, right? And we just uh, yeah, the board yeah. supported it, but when it went, then when it goes to the manager's office, they look into it and talk and talk about it. And I, at the last I heard, they were looking for further information. All right, very good. Um, any other board member comments? The only question I have, Kath, um, is I believe this weekend, is this the source of the sea cleanup this weekend? I didn't see anything on the notes. I, I thought it was this weekend. Oh, or is this um, weekend, I think. I believe you're right. I believe it is the source okay. to see cleanup. Somehow we missed that on the uh, monthly report. Okay, no, I did. I just didn't know if there was any town involvement or if it's the same, same as typically goes. It's it's the same. Um, it it works with volunteers and MDC and the um, Connecticut River Conservancy. I'm, I'm yes. Yep. Conservancy group. Yep. yep. And my staff have the Nature Center. Is people call there and volunteer just so they make a list to see who's coming. And MDC donated the um, dumpster again and everything. So it's all set to go. Okay. So the har harbor master, just make note because you'll probably see people going along the riverbanks picking up stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, Kathy, just curious on the IT manner, does Parks and Rec handle its own IT or does the town have someone who handles that? The, the town has a, it's a, um, it's an IT department that okay. normally has three people in it. And through a good portion of COVID and maybe till about a month ago, we had one person and, um, and they just hired someone within the past yeah, two, three, four weeks. I lose okay. track of time here, but somewhere. So they're just they're just starting to get caught up on some of the things that they put to the side. Um, they they told me two years ago they had to update my Microsoft 2007, <laughs> and haven't done it yet. I can't believe you can still use that. I, uh -huh. Neither can I. Sometimes I sit here and do a little dance. Oregon Trail boots up at the same time. Uh, that's just an example of the stuff that's been pushed off because of what COVID brought in. Yeah, my staff laughs at me, so I, I get it all. Yeah, but to, COVID was 12 years after 2007. <laughs> so. Um, okay, so that wouldn't fix our problem. When you do, Dan, just I know you said you'd send it out. If we also, Kathy, could send that survey out to all the sports teams and, you know, use our network to make sure that gets disseminated to the community yeah yeah Kat, 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 i don't want to dwell on the it thing but does the school system also have it folks they do okay yeah yeah so i i probably will be bugging you kathy um okay uh, on this as soon as the committee knows uh as soon as we get the which I think, like I said, next week, the final version of what we're going to do, then it's, uh, I will either bother you or have Cindy Greenblatt bother you. Yeah, um, <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> Dan, Dan, are the, the um, Keisha Farm uh, Committee, when they meet, are they on Zoom now and they're taped and re recorded so they can be shown if, if that's tied into the link? I'm just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they want to see us, okay. No, I, I don't, I just, the more information you can get out there, the better. If there's a link, yeah. we should put everything on it. Yeah, no, we're, we're on uh, Zoom meetings. Um, yep, uh, we meet, if you did want to call in, I think it's the first Monday of every month at five o'clock. If you do want to just join the meeting to, to watch it, you're welcome to. Um, so board member comments, the Harbor Management Commission, uh, we have a Harbor Master here. Um, any updates? No, no, not really. It's the year of the flooding for sure. <laughs> is, the, is, the, um, is the boat in the cove? Is the harbor man, harbor? Uh, it's, at the, it's at the garage right now. Hopefully, I'll get it back in the water for this weekend. Okay. Is it running okay? Everything is okay? Yeah. The boat was running fine. It just went out for service and it's just been flooding left and right. How's. um? The traffic down there have you had any big issues or anything else this season 
No, like Kathy said, I mean, the new ramp's working great while it's high, high water this year. Okay. I mean, there's still the occasional jet skier that decides to go 40 miles an hour in a cove, but that's about it. Okay. All right. So that's it. Anything else or we're good? Move we're good. Right. We'll come to end soon. That's Any nice. other comments, questions? No. Make a motion to adjourn. Can I have a second? I can't vote, so I can't help you out. I can second. second. Man. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Have a good one. I'll keep you guys all updated as soon as I know a little bit more. Thanks, Dan. Thank have you. a good night. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good, good night, one, everybody. Good night. Bye bye. Good night.